This is the easiest rendering software you can learn in 2022. And today I'm gonna to teach you exactly what you need to know in under 15 minutes. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And I know that BIM software is critically important, but rendering software is just as important to get you the next client. So today we're breaking down everything you need to know to be an expert in rendering in Twinmotion. I'm simply gonna start by pressing the import button, going across to open and finding anything that I have available to me. In this instance, I'm gonna be using a SketchUp file that has been exported from ArchiCAD and simply looks like this. The SketchUp file is my 3D model exported into multiple parts. So as you see, it is the full 3D model as we would have seen in ArchiCAD. Now, Twinmotion is very, very simple. And for best results, what we wanna do is actually use the best textures and materials available. So if we come across the left-hand side, you'll see the small little triangle and you'll see a series of icons for different things. It is very self-explanatory what everything is. But instead of coming across the materials in the top left, we wanna to come to Quipsal Megascans. We wanna use these materials and surfaces as much as we possibly can throughout this entire project, wherever we possibly can to get the best materials we can. So as an example, if I came across to metal, I came across to bare, and I found a material that I personally liked, let's say this brushed aluminium looks good. I would then simply download this material to make it available to me, wait a few seconds for it to download, drag and drop that exactly on the material I'd like to use it. So in this instance, the window frames, it would automatically adjust all my settings at the bottom of the bar. And for this, I wanna make it a nice dark black color. So simply adjusting the material, if I fly in very close, we're gonna see that texture that we're looking for. We can scale it up and down if we wanna make it more aggressive, larger, smaller, we can increase the reflectiveness, so how shiny it is and the colors as well. So simply dragging sliders up and down gives us what we're actually looking for. You can repeat the same step for everything in the Quipsal Megascans available library. However, the two things you probably won't find in the surfaces is glass and neon light. So we're gonna have to go up back to the very start, go to our materials, press on glass and select the glass that we like significantly more. So in this instance, I could pick mirrored glass, drag and drop, reflective, drag and drop, whatever my heart desired. I also have to go back, scroll down to neons and find a neon color that I like to introduce into my light strip here. Just like everything else previously, we have some sliding scales up and down to adjust as we see fit. We also have more down the bottom if we wanna adjust the color of our actual LED strip so it's better suited. Now, just like the materials, what is very important is plant selection next. So if we come all the way back, we have our vegetation and landscape in the top, and then we have a series of different elements. We have bushes, shrubs, flowers, and landscaping. So all we need to really do for any of our plant selections that we like is scroll through, find what we like. Let's say we like this bush here, we can click on it once, click on it again, and then repeatedly click, or we can drag and drop the same way we do with the actual textures if we just want one at a time. If these aren't enough for you, again, Quipsal Megascans has a variety of new 3D plans that you can introduce into your software. In the latest version of Twinmotion, you also have Sketchfab directly integrated into Twinmotion. So you can simply search for whatever it is you're looking for. Now, what makes Twinmotion so special is the 3D elements and the simplicity of it. So like you see here, we have a big patch of grass that just simply looks like grass. It looks terrible, it's 2D, it's flat. So what we wanna do is actually come down to the bottom to our context, go to our vegetation paint, come back out of our tree selection, go to our grass, Select the grass that we like the best and drag it into our palette down the bottom. Next, we wanna select our brush, reduce the brush size to what we need and what we're looking for, and then simply paint some grass in. So without going into too much complexity, that is literally all you have to do. You can adjust your grass density if you want it to be 100% grass, less grass, more grass and you can also adjust the things like the size of the actual blades of the grass, the dryness, the tint, the stripe, to make it look exactly how you want it. Now, if you've accidentally clicked off of that grass, you can select it once again to activate it and continue painting 
like you would do originally as well. Now you've got the basics of the materials, the textures, the lighting, as well as the planting and grass. Next, we wanna focus on the 3D sky itself. Now, yes, Twin Motion has amazing skies, but you really wanna be using the sky domes and you wanna be using HGRI skies. So if we go into our noon cloudy as an example, we can select any one of these clouds that we see fit. Let's pick this second one, download it, drag and drop it into your sky, allow it to automatically create that 3D sky. And then you have a series of new toolbars down the bottom that we can adjust. So if we rotate the sky, we'll see the shadows adjust accordingly, which is exactly what we want to make sure it looks as realistic as possible. And then we can also increase and decrease the sky's actual intensity as well. So for the time being, I'm just gonna leave it as four and I'm just gonna continue to rotate this around to where I see the best lighting is for me. Now, if you don't like that selection of the sky, you can simply select another one, drag and drop it to replace it. And you can repeat this process a million times until you find the perfect sky for you. Now, what really makes a render realistic is the context, the character, and the actual environment. So after we finished modeling all of our materials, we've fine-tuned all of our landscaping and made everything perfect. We also wanna make sure that we include furniture where we need it, we wanna include curtains where we need it, and we wanna include any of those finer details that really make it look realistic. So coming back out of everything, we can come back into Quixel Mega Scans, we can go to our assets, we can even come back into our objects that are already pre-built into Archicad. Let's say we wanna go into home, living room, we want some chairs, we have an abundance of objects available to us. Same as everything else, click, drag, drop as we see fit and place them exactly where we want them to be and exactly where we need them to be. When you finally accomplish that and put everything into this scene exactly as how you want it and exactly how you see it, if you're looking for anything architecture related, make sure you check out the first link in the description below, davidtomich.com.au has some fantastic digital downloads that are gonna save you an abundance of time as an architect, student, or anybody in the architecture profession. The next thing that makes a realistic render is your camera and photography skills. So when you've completed everything to the way you need, you're gonna come down to this little media button down below. You're gonna click on that, go to our image, and create our first image. It doesn't matter what that first image is aligned to because now we're actually gonna start moving around, finding that perfect camera angle, adjusting for this first of all, and then we're gonna go into the more settings down below and we're gonna start playing with the camera angles. So starting off, your field of view is gonna be about 90 degrees. You want that to be anywhere from 50 to 60 millimeters on a camera lens because that is a nice, clean, prime lens. So if you simply adjust the field as you see fit, you'll find the perfect angle that suits you in your environment. So in this instance, I think 65 millimeters looks quite good for this particular image. I don't wanna turn my depth of field on. I don't really care too much about parallelism in this instance. I wanna drop my vignetting to zero and I can play around with any other settings if I so choose. Once that is adjusted, you wanna come back to image one and you wanna to go to your lighting format. Now, what you'll notice is exposure is zero, zero, but if you come into more and turn exposure to off, you wanna manually adjust that exposure because the more you can control the lighting, the more you can create the scene. So by simply adjusting the lighting to exactly how you want it, let's say 2.29 in this instance, or potentially even three, we can simply adjust it to where we see that picture being perfect for us. We don't wanna overexpose it, especially if we're going into Lightroom after, we wanna keep it just underexposed a little bit. Last but not least, the most important, most critical element is when you come down to the format picture button in the end. This is what it's gonna do when it exports the image. So you wanna make sure it exports the image in the best quality available to your computer. By default, you have 2K, 4K. In later versions, you have 8K and 16K. But what you can do is select 4K straight away, and that will give you twice the render quality you would originally have by default. If your computer has more power, it has a good rendering card, a good graphics card, then you can bump that up to 8K, 16K, and you can get some realistic images produced very quickly. Now, that's all well and good, but before you go too far, you wanna come back to your image and you wanna hit that refresh button once again so that image is completely saved, the angles are set, ready to export. Now, the last thing that you have to do is come into export, go to image, select your image, and then press the start export button. When you've completed all of those steps for every single detail, it may take you a significant amount of time to actually set everything up, 
but the steps are exactly the same throughout the entire project. So take your time, go through the materials library, go through the planting library, find out exactly what 3D textures you need, select and update your camera angles perfectly for your scene as well as your 3D sky, and then go ahead and export the best 3D render your computer is capable of to produce the best renders possible in the shortest amount of time. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you check out the playlist to the side of me. If you loved the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. But like always, I'll see you next Monday.